All right, so here's a one-year update on my grafted Bradford pears and my crab apples. If you're thinking about doing this, come join me in the chaos. All right, so it's January 26, 2024. And this last year, I cut most of my Bradford pears and my crab apple trees down. These things were about 40 feet tall. And I cut them down to about, I don't know, what is that, a five foot stump? And then I grafted into them. And just for reference, I mean, I don't know how many inches that is. I'd guess about two inches wide. That's one year's growth. So when you have a tree that big, you get extremely accelerated growth on your scions. In case you don't know what a scion is. This bottom part down here, you'd call your rootstock. This top part, the different variety, you'd usually call your scion. Or scion. I've heard some people pronounce it scion. <clears throat> and as you can see, that's all new growth. Um, this one right here is a gala. Um, the rootstock is a crab apple, little cherry looking apples. And this is a gala. And then you can kind of see a little bark difference. <clears throat> this one is a Fuji. Over here, I have a Mutsu. And then this right here is a rootstock. This is just a crab apple. I might remove this. I was kind of thinking about leaving one rootstock um, branch. It's kind of growing inward anyway, so I think I'm probably just going to cut this one off. Over here I have a Bradford pear. <clears throat> this one I actually had a, a scion fail. I think it was because a bird landed on it. I had one here, but this one made it. And this is a Bartlett. So this is Bradford, this rootstock down here. These are the wild calorie uh, Asian pears that you see popping up everywhere with the stinky uh, pollen. And then I grafted into it a tiny little pencil thickness um, scion of Bartlett. Bartlett is the ones you get at the grocery store, the normal average pear that you get at the grocery store. So it did pretty well. I had to prune it multiple times just because it was going way too tall, way too fast. And I was worried it was going to fail like this one did because this one got huge. This one literally looked like a tree was sticking out of a tree and then it just ended up shearing off. Um, I'm not really sure why it was just laying on the ground. I did a video about it, but um, it could have been from a bird. It could have been a kid. I don't know. Um, I'll just blame it on my own failure of letting it grow too fast and not securing it. I ended up putting the duct tape on after just to further reinforce its connection to the tree just because they got so big so fast and all this is kind of just suckered wood i was worried it wasn't getting enough um doing enough photosynthesis to survive and so i let some of that grow on <clears throat> and then here's another crab apple that i put a, a gala onto it's a gala scion and then i think that one, I think that one was Mutsu or Red Delicious. I have a few apple trees that I'm already growing and so I was cutting scions off of them. And then this is just a rootstock scion, or rootstock growth that I let go just to help keep the tree balanced. Basically I wanted to keep this branch alive and so I let one of the suckers go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off and then put a scion here. But if you don't have any, <clears throat> if you don't have any leaves harvesting energy, the branch will just kind of just shrivel off and die. So you have to have something feeding it or it'll just drop it. And these are all suckers that I just transplanted. So I had suckers popping up underneath my trees. Um, I think most of these are actually from that crab apple. So this is all crab apple rootstock. And this is one year's growth. This is six feet tall and it did all this in one year. So these all started like last April and they grew until our first frost, like in December or something. And they grew six feet tall. So I'll probably cut those back and then graft into them. I think Fuji is my favorite. Second's probably Gala. So I'll do Fuji and Gala probably intermittently. Or maybe I'll do a little bit of both just to create a little Frankenstein tree. Um, I'll probably do like a cleft graft and do like two scions. Um, I'll talk about that when I do it. I'll probably video it. This peach tree finally lost its leaves. These leaves just barely fell off. Um, we had a few, uh, we had like a week at negatives negative 15 ish and that knocked the leaves off but this one's crazy hardy like it took forever for the leaves to finally fall off like until we went negative i still had green leaves on this thing so this is an impressive variety it's actually a rootstock variety top half of it just died and so i let the rootstock go and 
what I kind of want to do is create a stool bed, if you know what that means. It basically means that this is going to grow a rootstock tree here, but it'll, it'll very likely put out suckers. And what I'll do is I'll take those suckers and I'll just graft peach trees and cherry trees and stuff into those suckers. And then I have a whole bunch more little apple trees here. And these ones are store-bought. These are where I get my scions from. Yeah, this is, uh, I think this is two years old. So that's pretty thick too. Um, I would say like an inch and a quarter maybe, maybe an inch and a half thickness on the trunk. And then I have some cherry trees over here. I don't remember which ones I had. I think I got two bings and a, and uh, whatever the other popular one is. And I believe this, I can't remember what that is. I think it's an apple tree actually looking at the bark. This might be my uh, pecan tree. I have a pecan tree back here somewhere. I'm just not familiar with pecans, so I'm not very good at recognizing the bark. <clears throat> and this is a Nutella tree. Uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, mine went blank. Hazelnut. So I'm going to head over to my other grafted, top worked trees that I made over here. So I had a whole bunch of these ridiculously tall um, Bradford pears over here. Just like skyscraper though, like they're terrifying. I thought they were just gonna fall over. Hey buddy, let's pound. He's a good boy, you protecting the yard like a good boy? Okay, I'll pet you. Oh, you don't wanna be a pet? Okay, whatever. Sometimes he wants to be a pet, other times he doesn't wanna be touched. It's my only dog that doesn't really always wanna be a pet. <clears throat> okay um this is the only one that i didn't graft so this was like my control tree um as you can see i had two failed grafts and i was going to regraft it and i'm like i'm just gonna leave it and just let it go because i wasn't sure if my my top working was going to kill these trees. So I basically just wanted to leave this one and just to see what would happen if it would die or not. And it just put out a whole bunch of suckers and lived. All the rest of these were successful. Um, I believe the reason why these ones were successful and that one wasn't is because I painted these ones. I got this special uh, grafting paint and I just grafted that, or I uh, painted that cut. I wasn't sure if that'd be bad. So I wanted to leave one not painted. And so that one I did not paint. And apparently the paint's important because the only one I did not paint, this is anecdotal, because I only did it once, but the one I did not paint didn't make it. So I would say painting seems important just to keep it from drying out. Because I think what happens is the vascular system of the plant, if you don't paint it, it just kind of recedes, kind of like rots back, kind of like a, I've heard like if you get a tooth pulled, like the bone will kind of uh, atrophy, is that the word? It'll kind of just die back a little bit. And I think that's what happens if you don't paint it, it kind of just goes back. And then if it goes back too far, it stops feeding the scions and then the scions die. Um, anyway, this is, uh, oh, you can see a little fruit spur. Fruit spur, is that what that's called? So I believe I'm gonna get a Bradford pear here. And this one went nuts. Um, I haven't pruned these yet because I want scion material, grafting material, but you can see these ones kind of went nuts and I cut the tips because they were just getting really, really long and I was afraid it was going to fall over. But yeah, did pretty well. Again, like an inch wide at least. That's just one year scion growth. This one only had one make it. This is what it looks like when they fail. This one just snapped off. I think it was wind, that same windy day. And these ones are huge. So these scions, I don't know, inch and a half, inch and a half wide. Giant mulch piles. <laughs> And this one I probably put too many. I have like 
five scions. Hey, darling. So I'm gonna have to prune these back, thin them out a lot, and then I'll use that material to do more grafting experiences or experiments. But that's. Pretty the new trees look. Yeah. Can't wait till they leap out.